Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with day two of Plant Miss, and I am so excited to continue on with our little mini-series, How to YouTube, for all of you who are content creators or aspiring content creators. Yesterday, we covered planning and organizing content, and today is all about filming. How do I film my videos? What do I recommend? What equipment do I use? What do you need to get started? I'm going to cover as much of this as I can in this video. Keep in mind, I'm not an expert and this is just what works for me, but hopefully this will work as a good jumping off point for any of you who are either just getting started or trying to upgrade your equipment to improve your videos here on YouTube. As you all know, I make two main types of videos on my channel, videos that feature my face like this one and videos that are shot down towards my table for bullet journal or art videos. So I will talk about both of those in this video. Please keep in mind, you definitely don't need all of this equipment to get started on YouTube. Cameras on smartphones are good enough these days that you can literally just use your phone and some sort of tripod or stand to get it in the position you need. Natural light and your phone is more than enough to get started. But if you're looking to upgrade and maybe buy a camera, maybe get some lights, maybe buy a microphone, hopefully I can help you today by showing you the equipment and the setup that I use. Now keep in mind that this is just a snapshot in time. Things are ever changing. I am always swapping out for a new lens or trying a different lighting layout, especially because my husband is really into the technical side of video and has a lot of fun researching and finding new things I could try. So things are always looking slightly different, especially when I move into a new space as we did recently. But the setup I'm using right now is really working for me and it's an evolved version of something I've been using for essentially a few years at this point. So hopefully this is helpful for all of you. Of course, if you have any questions at all as I go through my equipment and my setup, please leave those down below and I will do my best to answer as many as I can. I really want this little mini series to be as helpful, as educational as possible. So please don't hesitate to ask any questions you have. Remember that tomorrow is all about how I edit my videos and how I make thumbnails nails and day four of this little mini series is going to be all about how I make money on YouTube. So without further ado, let's take a peek behind the lens. Let's look at what I'm looking at right now as I'm looking at you. So this is my view from where I'm sitting right now, borrowing my husband's camera for this and uh, spotting a little sleeping kitty over there. Hi Yoda. <laughs> So here we are, and this is what I'm looking at while I'm filming my face for this video. So up here, you can see this amazing setup here, multiple lights, two cameras. We will talk about that more as we go along. And then also in front of me right here, you can see my microphone here, another light right there. This is where I put my iPad if I need my script for a video or if it's sponsored or something and I need to check my brief. And you might be able to tell that behind that, that desk there is where I film my bullet journal videos with that camera that's pointing down. That one is what I use to film my tabletops. We will go into more detail, but I wanted you to see kind of an overview of what it looks like from my perspective while I'm filming. So let's start by looking at the main hub of equipment in my home office, which is all centered around my filming table. So the filming table that I have is from Ikea. And just like everything that I'm going to talk about in this video, I will link as many pieces of my setup as I possibly can in the description box. You can see off to the left there, I have a freestanding tripod. This is a Vanguard tripod. It is so versatile and very easily can hold the extreme weight of my camera, even with a prime lens on it. So highly recommend this tripod. It is quite good. In the center there, you can see the main piece of this setup, which is all mounted on a single pole attached to the desk. So this pole with the arms coming off of it, these would be used to mount computer monitors. And my husband had the brilliant idea to use this as a basis to build my filming setup. And it's been really awesome. This particular 
particular clamp and post came with two arms, but we were able to buy four more arms to complete this setup here. Starting on the left at the bottom, you can see a smaller light. I use this as a fill light just to make sure that I'm getting some light coming from the front of the desk there, a little bit closer to the desk. This helps a lot with shadows, especially because the only window in this room is off to the left there. So there's really no light coming from in front of the desk to kind of fill in that space, hence calling this my fill light. Above that on the left, you can see a big light mounted on that arm pointed up towards the wall and the ceiling, which is mirrored by another light on the other side. So all of these lights are Falcon Eyes RX lights. The two larger ones up top are Falcon Eyes RX 12 TD lights, and the smaller one mounted at the bottom there is an RX 8 TD. I have two more of these smaller lights. One I leave not attached to anything so I can put it kind of anywhere I need to, and the other small light is attached to the mobile setup, which you saw briefly earlier, but we'll talk about in more detail in a little bit. So all three of these lights are mounted directly to these monitor arms. The reason why the lights are pointed at the wall and the ceiling instead of directly down at the table is just to diffuse the light. That very, very bright white light bouncing off the white walls and the white ceiling helps to kind of fill all of the space the entire room with a soft diffused light. In the center we have my two cameras mounted, each on their own arm, and my husband was able to buy separate ball heads from tripods to screw onto the arms to mount the cameras on. So the camera on top is a Sony a6600, which is my newest camera. It's the camera that I typically use for filming my face and also for getting sort of sideways angled shots in my bullet journal videos or any b-roll you see where the camera is kind of moving around, maybe at the beginning and the end of a video. The reason why I use this particular camera for that rather than my other camera is just that this newer version has better image stabilization, so it does better with any kind of moving shots. And the lens that I use with this camera is a 30 millimeter Sigma lens, giving you that classic out of focus background and very sharp in focus foreground or whatever you're focusing on, which is a really nice effect for portraits on someone's face and also for getting more artsy or detailed shots. So where that top camera is mounted right now is where it sits when I film my face videos. So it's actually up quite high and it's tilted down on an angle to get a nice framing around my face when I'm sitting in my filming chair on the other side of the room. Because this lens is actually quite zoomed in, I sit pretty far away from my camera when I film my face videos, even though I end up looking like I'm quite close to the camera. When I'm not filming my face but am doing a bullet journal video, this camera instead of sitting up on this top ball head will actually be on the tripod in the bottom left hand corner so I can easily move it around and adjust it to get those side angle shots. So under my Sony a6600 I have my tabletop camera which is my Sony a6400 and the lens I'm using with this camera right now is actually the kit lens that came with a 6600. The camera can be mounted on the bottom as usual onto this ball head but I actually have it in a metal cage which allows me to mount it from any side but I've chosen to mount it from the top and this is just so that I don't have to flip the footage 180 degrees in editing and also when I'm live streaming the image is right side up. Both cameras, when they're in the position they are right now, use dummy batteries, which are what they sound like. They're a fake battery that actually just plugs into power because I have had issues with my Sony cameras overheating. That used to be a really big issue for me because I tend to film for quite a long period of time and the cameras would overheat and turn off and I would have to wait for them to cool down to keep filming. And using dummy batteries has really helped with reducing the internal heat on the cameras and has helped a lot with that overheating issue. So I definitely would recommend if you do go the Sony camera route and you're not going necessarily with some of the newest or top end models, if you do have issues with overheating, check out dummy batteries. They are 
a lifesaver. I also have a micro HDMI cable that plugs into both cameras and connects to the YOLO box, which you can see on the lower white table to the right, and that is what I use for live streaming. And I can also use it as a backup recorder. To the right of the cameras is a microphone, and this is an AKG shotgun mic with a windsock or a pop filter on it. And this is the microphone I use for live streaming. Up until recently, I was using one of my Tula mics for live streaming, but we recently swapped it out for this one just because it was easier to mount here and leave it permanently. I still use my Tula mic for all my voiceovers that I record sitting at my computer, including the voiceover I am recording right now that you are listening to in the future. <laughs> but I will talk about equipment that has to do with the editing stage of videos in tomorrow's video. I'm not going to get sidetracked. Under the microphone, you can see a monitor, but it has been giving us some issues, unfortunately, since we moved. So it's actually not plugged in here. I just wanted you all to see where it normally sits. The monitor, usually when it is plugged in, just shows what's being recorded on my cameras. This helps a lot for checking focus because sometimes the camera screens themselves are small enough that you can't really see the details. And it's especially helpful when I'm filming my face, again, because I actually sit on the other side of the room. I'm far enough away that I cannot see at all if my face is in focus within the camera screen. I'm just too far away to see that kind of detail or if it's sharp or not. So the monitor is a lifesaver for that. Moving to the equipment off to the side there, I already mentioned the YOLO box, which is what I'm using for live streaming. I got this pretty recently, so I'm still learning how to use it and getting my bearings, but so far it is a lot more user-friendly than any other method I've used for live streaming, which I am grateful for because streaming is complicated and stressful enough. So I'm very happy with this so far. And this is the YOLO box pro. To the right of the YOLO box is my mixer, which is a Behringer Flow 8. I use this while live streaming to control whether or not my microphone is being picked up, the background music, and I can control it manually with the faders, or I can use an app on my phone or my iPad to control it. It's also the interface for my speakers on my computer. So that is the entire setup around my desk where I do the majority of my filming. And under the desk is 500 very well-organized cables. <laughs> Hopefully my description of everything was clear. But again, if you have any questions, check the description box where everything is going to be clearly listed or pop a question in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is this little mini mobile setup. And this is what I pull out and put in front of me when I'm filming a face video. So as you can see, this is another one of those smaller Falcon Eyes lights, the RX8TD with a little light box around it just to diffuse the light. This I point right at my face from a little bit of a lower angle just to light the bottom of my face since all the other lights in the room are from a higher angle than me when I'm sitting in my filming chair. It can tend to cause shadows on my face, so this just helps to light the bottom portion portion of my face and I usually turn it quite low so it's not super bright in my eyes. And all of this is mounted on a standard K and M tripod mic stand. Then to the right you can see there's a tablet or iPad holder clamped to the mic stand and this clamp came with this tablet holder. And this is just where I put my iPad when I'm filming so I can have my script there or information about the video. When I'm doing a reading wrap-up video for example I can have my stats up there so that I can read them off. I can have Goodreads open so that I can double check the review I wrote of a particular book if I can't remember what I wanted to say. That comes in super handy and then mounted above that is another microphone. This is the same type of mic as the one mounted on my desk, although this one doesn't have the pop filter, so it looks a little bit different, but it is another AKG shotgun mic. Again, up until very recently, I was using a Tula mic mounted to this system. It's just a lot easier for me when things can have a permanent home and I'm not constantly plugging and unplugging things and switching mounts over from one stand to another and adjusting everything just to be able to sit down and film. It's really nice to be able to leave things in their home and have dedicated equipment for different purposes. It is a privilege to be able to own multiple microphones and, you know, 
you know, multiple lights and all of that. I'm certainly grateful that I am able to do that. But, you know, on the other hand, these are investments that I've made into myself, into my business as a self-employed creator to purchase multiple cameras, multiple microphones, multiple lights to make my life easier because time is money, especially when you are the sole employee of a business, when it all of the work falls on your shoulders. So for me, saving that time is worth the money. You may not be in a place where you want to have multiple microphones or multiple cameras, but maybe someday it will be the right choice for you. I certainly didn't for a very long time. And here is some behind the scenes footage as well, showing me filming a tabletop bullet journal video with everything in its position. You can see that tabletop camera and my B-roll side view camera there and all my lights are are lit. And again, typically that monitor would be showing what I'm seeing up on the little camera screen. And that's my whole setup. That's all the equipment I use for filming. And this is how it is configured. So I hope that this gives you some ideas if you are trying to figure out your own setup, if you're trying to figure out how to accommodate filming in your space. This is just one way to do it, but this is the happiest I have been with my filming setup. Pretty much ever in my entire YouTube career. And I started my first YouTube channel 15 years ago, so that is saying something. And pretty much all of the credit goes to my husband. He has figured out 99.9% .9 of this. I think the only piece of equipment in everything that I showed you that I researched and purchased myself without his input was the tripod. It is a really good tripod though. <laughs> but almost everything is thanks to him and his innovative ideas. So pop a thumbs up in the comments to give some props to the husband for being awesome and giving me the best filming setup a girl could ask for. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for day two of Plant Miss, and I hope you'll come back again tomorrow for Plant Miss day three. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll be notified every day when I post a new Plant Miss video, especially because there are a few more giveaways coming up throughout Plant Miss scattered in there, and you definitely don't want to miss them. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. I appreciate you so, so much to the moon and back. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you really soon tomorrow for Plant Miss Day 3. Bye, friends. Hi, Jimmy. What's up, buddy boy? Hi. Hello. Hi, Chewie. Come here, buddy. Come here. Talking, 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 looking like I'm filming a video, talking to the camera. Hey, hello. Hi. How's it going?